In this video, I'm going to walk you through everything that you need to know about ClickUp dependencies. I'm talking about how we can actually use and set them up, and best practices, as well as all of the click apps that you're going to need to know about because they involve your dependencies that you've actually built. So let's go ahead and get started. So if I come here into my ClickUp workspace, obviously to actually use our dependencies inside of ClickUp, we need to go ahead and set up some tasks. So I'm gonna go ahead and start building out a workflow. Let's for this example, just say we're writing a blog post for either our company or for a client. So at the parent task level, I'm gonna name that blog post. And then underneath that, I'm gonna go ahead and set up some subtasks, which all of these subtasks are essentially gonna be the subtasks that we're going to use to go ahead and complete this blog post. So anything from us, writing out the blog post, approving the blog post, to sending it for uh, to the client for review, all the way to publishing this blog post. That's essentially what all these subtasks are going to represent. If I gave you a better example, instead of me just writing out all the subtasks like this, as you'll see, we have blog posts, and then we have all these steps from creating the strategy, writing the outline, completing an interview with the client, writing the copy, proofing the copy, all the way down to scheduling the blog publish date. So essentially, that's my whole entire workflow. All these subtasks are what it takes to actually go ahead and complete this parent task or the name of this deliverable there. So we'll drop down back here and then go through how we can actually add in these dependencies. And so as you can see here, I have my whole sort of workflow set up, subtask one to four, and there's a couple of different ways that I can actually go ahead and add in dependencies in ClickUp. The first one and probably the most obvious is I can go ahead and click into a task. And then all I need to do is either go into relationships right here, very simple, or I can actually go ahead and go to relationships in this menu over here. So a bunch of different ways that you can find it. And as you'll see, I can go ahead and click dependency. Otherwise, if I were right here, I clicked on that. As you'll see, you can also block a task or wait on a task, whatever relationship you wanna build within that dependency chain. So let's say we wanna go ahead and block a task. I'll click on that and that's actually gonna go ahead and pull up my tasks that I went ahead and just added in. These are my recent tasks. Um, so I'll go ahead and let's say task number one, subtask number one, we wanna block subtask number two. So I can go ahead, click just like that. If I didn't see that in that menu, I could search for it and find that subtask, but that's essentially how I would go ahead and find that to go and block it. And so you'll see what happens now is that relationship, it also shows up here. It says, hey, this task is blocking subtask number two. You'll also see it has this little blocking icon there for me to know. And then if I dropped into subtask number two, it's also gonna show me that this is waiting on like that. And it'll show subtask number one is what we're waiting on. In addition, if I come back to the list view, it's also gonna show me there with this little red icon, say it's blocking, and this one is waiting on. And so the other way that we could actually go ahead and add in dependencies as well is if we went over here and added in a dependency column. You'll see I have this one already shown, so I'll go ahead and hide it and then bring it back up so you can see how I did that. But what I would do is either go to the columns uh, right there, or I can actually go ahead and click add a column that way. So I'll go this, they're both gonna pull up the same exact menu. And then I'm gonna go over here and create a field. So for this case, I'm gonna to wanna to pull in dependency, just like that, click on that, and as you'll see, that's gonna pull up my dependency section right here. So again, that's gonna show what the dependency actually is. Subtask number one is blocking subtask number two, and then subtask number one is related or blocking subtask number two there. And so what I wanna do, if I wanna actually add into dependency, it's gonna pull up the same exact menu, but I would just click there on this column. As you'll see, dependencies, I can go ahead and add a task, either waiting on, or blocking just like that. Very easy to add those dependencies in. However, there's a much easier way to add these dependencies in, which I want to show you. And so what I can do, instead of adding them in the list view and having to find that task, I can easily go ahead and create a Gantt view that allows me to add in dependencies that way. See, it says plan time and view dependencies, so you can also add dependencies in this view as well. So all you need to do to add a Gantt view is just click on that. Just like that, you can go ahead and change some options, rename that if you want to. Let's just leave that like that for now. And then you'll see what I wanna do is I'm gonna drop down my blog post and I'm gonna see all of my different subtasks here. As you can see in this view right now, nothing is actually showing up because the Gantt view is all built on due dates. So I wanna make sure I have due dates in here for me to be able to add in dependencies or really do anything. So what I wanna do here is I wanna start adding in due dates. I can, in a list view, add in due dates, obviously, as I could see this column here, either add them there or come in here and add the due dates in that way. But to make it very easy, I can do a Gantt uh, view to add in my due dates as well as my dependencies. So let's make it a little bit easier on us and not do this week view, let's do daily view. And so we'll drop that down again. Make sure you go ahead and click autosave so that we actually keep this updated as we edit this view. 
But as you can see now, what I want to do is uh, this is today here. Let's say subtask number one. As you can see, if I hover over this Gantt view now, it's going to say click to schedule uh, this task. So what I'm going to do is subtask number one. Let's say we're going to do that today. Subtask number two is due tomorrow. Whoops, I clicked the wrong one. Let's just drag it over like that. It's also something that you could do here. We'll go here, subtask number two, that's going to be due tomorrow. And then subtask number four, that's going to be due on Monday. And so as you'll see, that dependency that I added in is showing up there. So subtask number one was blocking subtask number two. That's what I added in earlier. It shows up for us and shows sort of that directional view of that dependency with this line and this arrow. If I wanted to, let's say that was a mistake, I didn't want that subtask number one to be blocking subtask number two, I could easily go in here in my Gantt view and delete the dependency just like that. So very easy to go ahead and delete those. But now I wanna actually go ahead and add my dependencies. So now what I'm able to do is I can come over here, as you'll see as I hub, uh, uh, go over and hover over this subtask right here, you'll see these little gray dots appear on either side. And so what I can do is I can hover over this task just like this, and I'm actually gonna go ahead and click there, and I'm gonna start dragging. As you'll see, we get that little a line that shows up. I can actually go ahead and drag this to really wherever I want to go and block a specific task. So I'll take subtask number one. If I wanna block subtask number two, I'm gonna go directly to that little dot that shows up. As you'll see, as I drop it and I unclick, it's actually gonna go ahead and set up that dependency for me. In addition, if I wanted to continue going down the line, subtask number two is gonna block subtask number three. I could do it just like that. The other thing that you'll notice with these is these are actually directional dependencies. So if I were to take subtask number four and drag that to subtask number three, that's essentially going to take this in block subtask number three, which we don't necessarily want in this. That doesn't really make sense if this is gonna be due after subtask number three, we wanna make sure that they're following along with those due dates as well. And so don't add in that direction of sub, uh, dependencies. We'll wanna take this and we wanna drag it down to subtask number four as opposed to subtask number four, dragging up to subtask number three. And so that's how we would go ahead and add in our dependency chain. Very easy to do that and add those in as well as if you made a mistake, you can go ahead and delete those just like that. And so now the most important piece of this, and this is really based off how I'm building my workflow here, as I mentioned earlier, subtask number four is essentially like publishing the blog post. And so what that means is for our parent task, the parent task also needs a due date. I can basically take that and say, hey, when we're done with publishing the blog post, that means this entire deliverable, this entire task structure, this workflow is also complete. So the blog post is also is done. And so that parent task due date should also match up with the last subtask due date in this sequence. And so in terms of how that dependency now works is I would take subtask number four and I'm actually gonna drag this dependency and block that blog post. And I'll show you why I do that in just a second. But as you can see now, essentially what I've created is this nice workflow where essentially this is like uh, creating the strategy for the blog all the way down to publishing the blog. And then we're actually gonna go ahead and complete that blog uh, when that's done. And so now what happens if I want to, I can come over here to customize in my Gantt view I'll go to my Gantt options and I have a couple of different things I can turn on. The most important piece of this is gonna be turning on reschedule dependencies, but I can also turn on hide and skip weekends if I want to, which I'll show you what that does in just a moment. But now once I have that reschedule dependencies turned on within this Gantt view, I'm able to take a task just like this and I can drag it as you'll see this whole workflow is gonna go along with that and keep our consistent sort of due dates that we've built into this. So in addition, if I'm sort of in the middle of this process and let's say we didn't get subtask number three complete, I can take that and I can also drag that um, that day as well. And so the reason I put this dependency subtask number four blocking that blog post is because that means when I push this, it's gonna push that, which will also push our final due date for when we're actually gonna be completing this deliverable or this project, whatever we're working on. And so that's really the best way that you can go ahead and use dependencies to also help you remap some of those due dates and just use them well within the system. So in addition, as I mentioned, if I go back to my options here, I can also hide and skip the weekend. So what that does is you can see that's gonna hide those weekends in this view, Saturday and Sunday. Those are now, if I turn this on, those are now disappearing. And so what that does, and this is really cool, because if I need to remap some due dates and I don't want them to fall on a Saturday or Sunday, I can easily take the subtask number three. And as you'll see, what that does is instead of these now following on a Saturday or Sunday, this task and this task are gonna fall on that Monday. So now we've skipped the weekends when we've actually gone ahead and remapped those due dates. So it's a great way for you to be able to remap things and make sure that that work is not falling on a Saturday or Sunday if your team is not gonna be working 
on the weekend. So that's really the best way that you can actually go ahead and use those dependencies, remap due dates, as well as skip days where people might not or should not be working. And so that's how you'd build out your workflow and get all those dependencies lined up. Now there's a couple other things that you need to take uh, notice of. And so there's a couple of different click apps. If you've never uh, used click apps before, I mean, you probably have, but maybe you aren't as familiar with them. Essentially what click apps are, are things that you can turn off, different features you can turn off or on within ClickUp depending on what you want to have. So a couple of examples of those are going to be things that are revolve around dependencies. And so if I type in dependencies when I actually get to my click apps, you'll see I have a couple of different options, either dependency warning or reschedule dependencies. So let's talk through what these actually are. And so dependency warnings, essentially what this does is it says, hey, if I'm working on subtask number two and subtask number one is not complete and I try to complete subtask number two, what it's gonna do is it's gonna give me a warning and say, hey, just so you know, the subtask that's blocking your task is not complete. Are you sure you wanna close this? So in ClickUp, the dependencies are not hard dependencies. Essentially what a hard dependency is, is it says, hey, if I'm being blocked by a task before mine, based off of that dependency chain, that means I can't even complete that task right now. But in ClickUp, I am able to because they are soft dependencies. They're not necessarily going to stop you from completing that task. But if I have this turned on, it will give me a warning to say, hey, are you sure you want to close that? Just warning you, the one before this is not done, so are you sure this is actually something that you can complete? So that's what that would do. I'd recommend turning this on. You can turn it on for certain spaces if you want, but that's a great way just to make sure, hey, your subtask, you're completing this, but someone before you that's blocking you did not complete theirs. Are you sure that you can actually go ahead and close that? And so you'll wanna have that one turned on, but in addition, this is the other one, reschedule dependencies. Essentially what this means is if I go back to my uh, workflow here, if I were to, let's say, change the due date of subtask number one here, let's say we wanted to push this to August 7th like that. As you can see, nothing else within this date map is going to move with it in this, this list view. The only way that it's going to move is if I'm in the Gantt view and I have those reschedule uh, dependencies turn on. And so that's not gonna go ahead and move anything else downstream. However, if I went back to my click apps here and I had that reschedule dependencies turn on, that would remap all the due dates underneath it based off of that dependency chain. So this sounds great. However, it can be a little bit difficult if you have a bunch of people that don't really know that this is turned on. We always recommend that your project managers are using that Gantt view and they're in charge of remapping any of those due dates. Because if people are just moving their due dates, if they didn't get to it, and then they don't realize that now they just pushed 50 other tasks downstream from that one and really maybe got the timeline a little off, then that can be problematic and cause maybe a little bit more work on your project managers in the future. So I'd recommend because this one can be a little bit difficult if your whole team isn't super familiar that it's turned on or they don't really know what they're doing when they move a due date, I would just be uh, careful with turning this on. Again, it requires a lot of training. You can use it if you want, but we always say have your project managers. If a, a whole workflow needs to be remapped, use that Gantt view with the rescheduled dependencies turned on in that specific Gantt view instead of having this click, click app turned on. But again, it's your preference. Feel free to do whatever. Just be careful if that's turned on. That's going to make it difficult for your team if they don't know what all they're doing when they actually go and remap all of their due dates. So again, that's how you would use dependencies and get them built into all of your uh, different workflows. And so the coolest part now too, is that these are also can be saved into a template. So as you can see here, all of these different workflows that I have built out have the, the dependencies all built in with these due dates, time estimates and things like that. And if I go ahead and I actually save this um, as a template, if we jump over here, templates, save this as a template, I can choose to bring in all of my dependencies down here. So if you wanna have those dependencies built in, leave that check turned on, save that template. And what that does now is every time you go ahead and deploy that blog post, it's gonna bring the dependencies with it. So then I can also use that Gantt view to remap due dates and things like that. So it's a great way so that you don't have to go and add dependencies over and over and over again. All I need to do is save that into the template and deploy the template over and over and over again. And all those dependencies will be built out for me again, instead of starting from scratch. And so that's really the big ways that you can leverage and use those dependencies. There's one other thing I want to show you in this, just so if you wanna know how to use them in your particular views, when you're viewing your specific tasks, if I go to my home view or if I'm in any other view, the other way that you can use them is again, we have that shown as a column over here. But if I add in a filter just like this and I type in dependency, you'll see you have the opportunity to just show you where 
maybe a task has a dependency or it doesn't have a dependency. So I can start to see if I wanted to filter down by just where it's maybe waiting on a task or where I'm blocking something to help me prioritize my work, I'd be able to do that as well. So if I wanted to just show, hey, where am I blocking certain people in that dependency chain? I could go ahead and create a view just like that to show me just those tasks that are blocking other tasks. So that's just another option that you have if you want to use the dependencies to help you sort of build a view to show you where you might be blocking people, where you might have tasks that are waiting on other tasks, feel free to go ahead and adjust those filters like that. Maybe in your home view, or we like to always use a, ta a, a view like this at the everything level, where it's basically the same thing as a home view, where it's just showing me work assigned to me, but I can always bring in that dependency column to show me where I'm blocking work, as well as use that filter here to bring in those dependencies in this as well. It's just kind of a, a great way to help me sort of visualize where those dependencies are to show me who I'm blocking or who is blocking me in my work. But that's dependencies for you. If you have any other questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Otherwise, we have a great resource available to you, our ultimate how to use ClickUp guide, basically 50 plus pages that's gonna walk you through a lot of this and how you should set up and how you should use ClickUp as a team. Feel free to go check that out, download it and start using it to help you use ClickUp optimally the way that Zenpal does. And we're ClickUp's first ever and highest rated solutions partner, so have a lot of um, advice and great expert tips on how to best use the system to make your team more productive, more profitable and healthier in general inside of the system. But appreciate you watching. I'll see you again in the next video.